Hello everybody and welcome back, it's Creative Redenti back again, here with live creation mode time. So hopefully everyone's doing good. I'll be putting together something together. And again, another example of something you can create, make, build with stuff around. Now I like creating a lot up to 98.6% of the time. And remember everyone, everyone out there, we can all create a better future starting today. So you guys digging my uh, kind of thing that's on the screen right now? Just something I made with uh, some basic video editing software. Nothing too complex. You could probably do something very similar. This is not that hard to do. To be honest, it's just a couple overlays and all that stuff, transparencies and stuff like that. Very simple to do. So let me just bring up the side chat here, real quick. I had a few technical difficulties in the beginning, but I think I'm good now. And I almost forgot I muted myself early, so earlier on, and I forgot about that, so I have it on now. So yes, I will be creating a lot in this live stream. I have things right beside me that I'll be creating, and I'll be creating and slash crafting and all that good stuff. You may see a couple of kits, you may see some really interesting things. Some ideas that you can take and maybe adapt to your own uh, needs or things that you have. I'll, I'm just going to be using more common stuff so even you guys out there can create very similar things. So let me just whip out my intro here. And of course, like always, boom, CR's in the house, as you can see, CR is in the house, wait, <laughs> there we go, with a special maple leaf, <laughs> what is up everybody, special maple leaf there, I even have a little beaver, <laughs> this is something I have. I got my coffee for creation mode time with me because it's live creation mode time with creative redundancy because coffee and creating go hand in hand for me just like a beaver and a maple leaf so hopefully everyone's doing good out there I'm just gonna put my coffee to the side real quick here So yes, I will be creating a lot in this tree. I'm just checking up on a few things here. All right. Just rearranging my window real quick. So I can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> so let me welcome into the room here with a big boom. Canoe of Canoe Hound Adventures. Welcome. Thank you for taking the time to drop in. I appreciate it. I'm just gonna add some extra light in here. I don't like turning on the light during the day, but for a video or a live stream well so you guys can see more and stuff like that so, right proper lighting always helps so let me also welcome into the room with a big boom Sandra Ann uh, Gibbon I was always bad for pronouncing but welcome Sandra Canoe Hound Adventures thank you both of you for taking the time to drop in Oh, hey, thanks, thanks, thanks. I appreciate it. Yes, it's Friday, right? 
TGIF. Thank you to some fabricating. <laughs> That's what I say on Fridays. Because Fridays is meant to be a good day for most people. At least for me. There's something about creating on a Friday that I love. I mean, not saying I don't create on every any other day of the week, but, you know, Fridays, fabricating something, making something, creating something, building something. I just got so excited. Even before I started the stream a couple hours ago when I put out the notification, I was already, like, creating stuff. Not just for the stream, but just other stuff that I've been working on. So yes, I appreciate everyone dropping in right now, even for a minute or two. I appreciate the support and uh, everyone watering the thumbs up to make it grow. Because here is in the house. And yes, my mouse is right here. I'm just going to move that to the side here. So what am I going to be creating? More like what am I not going to be creating? More like it. I got a bunch of stuff on the side that I had planned for the stream which include a kit yes I'm done be making a kit live on the stream I'm gonna be using a couple of items and making a kit so stay tuned for that if you like uh, kits in that kind of survivalism preparedness community kind of thing well stay tuned because I'll be making one live on this channel very, very shortly. Just got to stand by. Now, I just want to say one thing first. Why do I even like creating? Why not? <laughs> to be honest, I think we are all meant to be creators in some form or fashion. I mean, from the early days of the caveman, they, they created uh, hand tools and stone tools so they could get more work done and do stuff and be more productive which gradually led to like you know things like uh, copper the bronze age the iron age uh, making pots and pottery and all that stuff so uh, pretty much in a nutshell that's why I create and, of course, like always, I like to create a better future by starting today. And we all can do that. You can take a, just create a little at a time, a little more each day, and it will gradually add up. Where you're trying to create a new life for yourself, create some more, um better content on your YouTube channel and stuff like that you know make um, progress in it as a movie once said you know make progress not perfection you know those little steps that you take can add up over time and create something just wonderful it's like putting a kit together all these little things you know, may seem insignificant or tr trivial, but combined together, they can make something really, really awesome. Maybe like a survival kit. Oh wait, you can't see me winking. <laughs> so let me also welcome into the room, Goldfish with a big boom. Welcome Goldfish office, and thank you for taking the time to drop in once again. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, uh, this is what I did on my previous li uh, live creation mode time. And yes, you can see that I've slowly been making progress in it and uh, trying to get it done. Just checking on some messages real quick. Ah, uh, thanks, Go Fish. I'm glad you're having a great time here anyways. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you have a great time everywhere else too. So, what am I going to do first? Well, there's actually something I need to do. <laughs> Since winter is actually coming 
gradually. I figure I'd make some more uh, tinder to use for uh, that, ne that next fire and stuff like that. So I actually got a stick ready for it. This is a stick that I actually uh, half batoned. <laughs> it's dry already. It was green when I originally had it, but I've left it out so it would dry out and all that stuff. So I'm actually going to be making some tinder with it real quick here. Let me put this somewhere. I'll just, I'll just put it out of the way. Now there's a couple of ways you could probably do this, I guess. Now this is kind of too big to use like a pencil sharpener. Like this one right here. Or even a carpenter pencil sharpener. I can't make sha shavings with it. Because also it's way too big. But you can use something like a cutting tool to make uh, shavings or feather sticks, fuzz sticks, whatever you want to call it, and increase the surface area. So when you're using it as tinder, air can get into it, and once air can get into it, you combine air, oxygen, fuel, and a heat source like a lighter, which I actually have in my pocket, like a lighter, Ferrocium rug with sparks, maybe a heat source like solar ignition or another heat source like uh, an exothermic reaction with, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. But, uh, make these feather sticks or fuzz sticks and put it into this container that I'm reusing this resource right here. I've shown this in a different video, very easy, just something I have. Something I'm reusing to store this stuff in once I actually do it. So let me also welcome into the room here both of them, by the way, with a big boom. Special Maple Leaf for Iron Fire Horse. Welcome. Thank you for taking the time to come in. And of course, with a big kaboom. FDL Seeker, thank you for taking the time to come in. It's nice to see you again. Hopefully all is well with everyone in the chat right now. And, you know, and all your family members and people you know, your friends, your co-workers, it's all that good stuff. So yes, I'm actually going to be making some feather sticks. Now, it's actually easier, or you get finer shavings if you use a thinner blade. But I'm just going to use a utility knife for this one real, real quick. You can see that I'm doing this right here. Now, I'm not really proficient or an expert at making feather sticks or fuzz sticks, but I'm getting better at it because I've been practicing it every so often, as much as I can. So when I go out, like, you know, enjoy the like camping, you know, reconnecting with the land, air, and water of this great country that I am part, uh, glad to be part of. So... Now, as far as I know, you want to start at the highest point and aim down and try to aim down to that same spot, keep turning it and stuff like that. And any kind of edges, that's what you're aiming for because it's kind of, it's harder to like make feather sticks on a round area. So you want that corner, that edge right here, something like right here, for example. Oh, that's all. Oh, I love my Mora too. I really do. <laughs> I really do. I really do. But this time around, I'm just gonna use a simple utility knife. This is something that you could easily get. So let's see how I. Not worry about if it falls off at the moment. Like I said, I'm no expert at it. I'm not trying to sh shape my table. I'll just put that to the side. So I'm just going to do this real quick. Now on this back side right here, I've actually kind of removed the bark earlier. You can use your uh, cutting tool or... For example, you can use like uh, gla glass woodwork too, uh, 
or the if you have a 90 degree spine on your cutting tool like on your knife or whatever you can use it to scrape like bark off and stuff like that which you know you could do something like this sorry I'm shaking it a little bit something like that actually I'm gonna use this one instead try it with this it's a little sharper yeah. never mind <laughs> I'll come back to this so I'm gonna make some feather sticks right here or fuzz sticks whatever you wanna call it I'm trying to aim a little about right there every time I finish there we go. yeah without breaking it see it's a little bit easier when you're on the ground and I'm trying not to shake the table so sorry for the shakiness on the top right hand corner on my second camera right here now sometimes when I'm doing this I'll actually stick my knee and pin this into the ground a little that way I can actually use both hands and have more control and stuff like that I've shown it in a video before and I usually uh, lit up those feather sticks afterwards with a ferrocium rod. So I probably should have batoned this a little bit more. I probably should have sliced it in half some more. So I'm gonna try the other side first. Like I said, this is a dry piece. Trying to get somewhere above this. I'm just. I'm pretty much I'm doing this so to increase the surface area. So when I get to start that next fire for whatever reason, I got some nice uh, shavings and stuff like that for it. So let me welcome after you into the house. What's up, Matt? What's up, Matt? I was about to say man, but Matt will do. See, I, I still have to practice at this, see? I'm not, I'm no expert at this. Sometimes I'm not really good at it initially, you know? Now, I'll show an example right here of a feather stick that I made earlier. See, here's a feather stick. Here's a really small one. Let me show it on camera. I made this. <laughs> it's really small. <laughs> Sometimes I can get it like this. Sometimes. Sometimes. So, yeah. Oh, is it? I, I've been trying to get this audio down. It's probably because I'm using both cameras this time. So hopefully you guys can hear me. I can, uh, let me just turn on the dB on this a little. Turn to minus 9.4. We'll try that out. Because I'm looking on the indicator and I'm in the green yellowish area. So I'm not in the red. And I'm kind of talking normally and projecting my voice towards the screen right now. Yeah, it's easier outside. <laughs> it's a little bit easier outside. And obviously it's always easier when you're not on camera doing this live. But, not my, clearly this is not my best favorite stick by any means. But, Things I keep in mind are um, keep turning it, try to make that feather stick three dimensional. And the reasons why these actually work so well, I'll just bring this back up on screen, is because there's increased surface area. So when you light it up with a ferrocene run, a flame source like a lighter match, stormproof match, zippo, something like that, because of the increased surface area, it has the tendency to like heat up faster and the heat can get to the center part of the feather stick yes well the bike is right in front of me man it's like right there <laughs> with the secondary camera right here I, you know what I, I know what I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go get this right now I get something else here. I'm gonna get another cutting tool. 
For some reason, that one's not working so great for me right now. For some reason. So I'm gonna get an air cutting tool right here. I actually got this for free. It is full tank. I do have a 90 degree spine on it because I've actually ran uh, um, a file over this and stuff like that. It's got what I call pine wick in it. Yes, that's what I'm calling it. It's got pine wick. This should be better. And yes, I have used this to make fitter sticks and to for light batoning. This actually should be better. I'm just going to start a new one. Oh yeah, this is much better. Oh yeah, it's much sharper. Now I'm actually just making shavings, but I'm also practicing the feather sticking. See, ideally I probably should baton this, slice it back down, but it's because I got this handle on it. See, when I was batoning it, I only went halfway. Cause there's a big uh, uh, notch right here. Like when you're batoning sticks, you try to avoid uh, these things right here. Cause it could affect, or it's much more difficult to go through. As you can see, I'm trying to aim for that same spot at the bottom as much as I can. And I'm looking for these angles. If it's rounded, it's much harder to kind of get a nice uh, curl going for a feather stick. So I'm trying to rotate it. Now, ideally, I probably should have uh, batoned this again. So this is definitely, by any means, not my best feather stick. But I'm just practicing again. And besides, I need to make some tinder anyways for later on. I'm trying to angle my blade or knife here as, as I do it. I'm trying to make the curls go outwards as much as possible. So clearly this is not my best feather stick by any means. I've actually made ones that, are, that look more like this one right here, but in this size. Hope you feel better soon, Iron Fire Horse, by the way. Oh, okay. Well, I'm calling this Pine Wick for obvious reasons. Really easy to make too. And gives me grip on the handle too for this uh, cutting tool right here. This was graciously gifted to me. Well, not even gifted to me. I got this for free. And it's full tank. And yes, I do have a sheet for it. And yes, there is a kit with this too. But you'll have to wait for that video. You guys are getting a sneak peek on this. Turning it every so often, so I actually have that uh, edge again on the stick. Anyways, I'm gonna go down a little bit more on this. Now, here's another tip right here. If you're ever batoning wood and it gets stuck, don't. You can try the wiggling out, but what I find helps, see, I'll actually do this real quick on the side. Real quick here. I'll do this on the side because I don't want to actually hit the table. I'm <laughs> baton the table. So I'm just, I'm just 
on this a little here, so it's stuck in here. But let's say this was stuck in there and you're having a hard time, you can't wiggle it out. Use another stick. And go like this. Go away from it. Because I've actually injured myself before because I've tried to wiggle a stick out. So. Go like this. So you, you'll see the edge right here. For example, so if, if this was really stuck in there, instead of trying to wiggling it out and maybe accidentally cutting myself, I go like this, hammer it out like that. That's what I do. Much safer, right? Much safer. Your uh, your hands not that your hands not close to the cutting edge, and you're probably gonna be less likely to cut yourself if your cutting tool actually got stuck while you were batoning, trying to split some wood, trying to get to the inside of wood because it's drier for example for example, or you're trying to increase the surface area. Now, a wise teacher once told me, the secret to fire is surface area. And I always remember that. Something, something uh, someone told me like 10 years ago. And I always keep that in mind. Now these shavings will be going somewhere by the way. So not my best ferris stick. I probably will do more with this by any yes it is easier outside and it is easier with two hands this is a soft piece of wood can't remember what it is exactly at the moment but it's a soft piece of wood this is not a hard wood I'm trying to make it more three-dimensional. Obviously, I would keep spinning, turning the stick and stuff until I get to the center. And obviously, I have a really big handle on it right now. Stuff like that. So I'll show it on screen real quick. Not my best ferris stick, like I said. I'm trying to get better at it. So I'm just gonna knock these curls off just because, well, because I am. Um, I'm just gonna I put down the cutting tool. Always put, oh, you know, and, and always remember another tip put your cutting tools away, put your tools away after you use them each time. That way they're back in the sheath. They're out of the way, and nothing randomly would happen. What'd you say? Let me just put that back. I'm gonna try this again with the utility knife. The utility knife is thinner, so I can actually get thinner shavings, but I can't press that hard. Now, if I was lighting this up with a fair seam rod or something like that with sparks, I'd probably make little mi minor, little thinner shavings, to, a spot to catch it and stuff like that. Like, if I lit this up with a uh, open flame right now, it would probably, like, stay lit for, like, a minute or two. Just because I've increased the surface area, and, well, it's dry, too. And, no, I'm not done do that because I'm inside right now. <laughs> So I'm just gonna knock these off. Cause I'm actually just making uh, pretty much tinder anyways. To use with like a hobo stove, rocket stove, that kind of thing. So I'm not really as concerned right now. I'll probably have to do this again anyways. I don't look it. So you could see kind of what was starting to happen. I mean, when I increase the surface area, I just kind of break it apart. So I could use it with like a hobo stove, rocket stove, that kind of deal. And add it to this container I have. Oh, there it is. I almost forgot where it was. It's in front of me. <laughs> 
just kind of roll this, well, put it in here, for example. No, I'm actually going to try this again. You know what? I keep forgetting I have the stick that I have actually, like, split. So this will actually be much better. Now, I just need some... See, I have a point on it because I was at a pencil sharper on it. So, what I'm going to do here is, if I have it nearby, let's put my glove down. I'll just put a glove down for this. This actually should be much easier for me to do. This stick is much thinner, although it's much more brown and wilted away. And of course, this is much more difficult at the moment because I'm trying to do it up on a table, not on the ground. I can't apply as much pressure as I want, and I can't put my knee on it, so I can't use both hands to gain more control. Because if this was, if my knee was right here, I'd be able to push with two hands, maybe gain some more control. So yeah, something I'll eventually work on. I mean, most likely I'll just probably split the stick, baton the stick some more, and just make a little, um, little sticks probably in around the size of like a match head stick. And that, that would kind of work with this too, I can add it into that. I have another container that I do have some, but I wanted to make some more before winter <laughs> hits. So if I really needed that, I can, I already have it ready to go in a ready to go state. And I don't have to do it later. So let me just clear off my table here. And yes, I'll work on this some more. I'll just put this aside here. Oh, really? Really? You want a striker from Bearded CB? Awesome, awesome. You should do a video on that. Iron Fire Horrors. I would love to see that. That would be cool to see. I mean, for some reason I just happen to have a magnesium bar in my pocket right now. Now, I don't know if this is actually good enough, but I might be able to... Oh uh, yeah, you can see. 90 degree spine on this. You can sort of see right there. Now if this was thicker and stuff like that and a little bit more of a good, really good 90 degree spine, I probably could do this much better. Now, with that said, I will show something else too. Let's see if, I'm going to do it with a piece of metal here. This is much better. The spine on this is much better. Same thing. I'm scraping it. Now these are definitely, these curls are much smaller, but if you got enough of them over time, you probably could light them up. As you can see there. Nice little pile right there that I just made. A matter of seconds. That's just using a, the 90 degree angle on a piece of metal. Which just happens to be this thing right here. Um, this is a piece of metal from that I found. I think it was supposed to be for a case or something like that. I don't I have no idea. I did all I knew that I could use it. So 
So I'll just put that stick to the side right here. And those shavings I'll probably just add in. And gradually make more in here. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah! Oh, I should remember that because I did a video later on that night about it with a live stream for it. For that. I, I should remember that. I almost forgot about that. You know, Iron Fire Horse, I can't believe it's already been a year already since then. Because if I remember that, that was in November. And so, you know, it's already late October already, so... Wow. Year goes by fast. Year goes by fast. I hope you used it or tried it out and s s stuff like that. Let's just done check up on something real quick here. Oh yeah, I remember that too. I remember that too. That's how I actually kind of met Valerie. Uh, through AOK -OK Forging Adventures. Through uh, Attack and Brenda. I still remember all that. That was awesome. You know, and that's another example of creating a better future starting today. Because they're helping people out. Helping create a better future for other people. Starting today, which was like a year ago, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, awesome, awesome. I hope I can uh, come back on another live stream and help them out again. I remember, I remember last year, I was like the last one on, on it. I remember that. That was really cool. Really awesome, too. So I'll just put this back on the screen here real quick. So I'm going to do something else here since I'm, the feather sticking is going to take a little bit more time than I thought. And it didn't turn out the well as well as I thought. But that's okay. I'm still practicing that, right? So still practicing that feather sticking skill and stuff like that. Sometimes I can do it easier. I mean, it just depends. The harder the wood is, the more difficult it is. And depends how sharp the blade is I have. So, you guys want to see a kit? You guys want to see a kit put together? Let me, let me hear you guys say you want to see a kit put together. So, put a one on the screen right now if you want to see a kit put together. That's related to preparedness or survival. You guys want to see a kit put together? I don't hear you. Or more like I don't see it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Val would love that Iron Fire Horse. So you guys want to see a kid put together? Now it's not going to be a very complicated kid. It's more spe uh, specific type of kid. But you guys want to see it put together? Because I'm actually going to put this together live Peter, on my channel during live creation mode with creative potency because I'm gonna be adding it in somewhere oh oh I see a one from iron fire horse do I get us do I do I get is anyone on second that <laughs> and while you guys uh, think about that or whatever I'm just gonna have a sip of coffee here So I'm going to be reusing a couple of resources here for this one. I, lo I love reusing. I do really do. And repurposing. I just kind of, you know, maybe not having as much money as other people when I grew up. I kind of had to reuse stuff, repurpose stuff. And stuff like that. So it just kind of stuck around with me for a while. So I'm gonna be reusing. I know, and you, when you look at it, you'll be like, "Really, you're gonna reuse that?" Yes, because there is no resource, virtually no resource or item out there that I won't create with. Virtually no resource or item I won't create with. 
and see if you know that in a different way of you reusing it. I've done it plenty of times. And just kind of made stuff using stuff that's actually just around. From making a, a remote control holder for someone <laughs> with the stuff that they actually had inside. Until they got a coffee table later on to put the remotes on. And that was just really simple too. I just took some, uh, some cordage that I actually found earlier in that day and I basically for people that use Amazon and stuff like that have things shipped to them usually from like Amazon or something like that those uh, those bubble bags and stuff like that basically those bubble bags have uh, a slit on it well well not a slit but they're joined together I cut off the top Joined it with some cordage, made a hanger for their uh, remote controls. Really simple, really simple. But that was just stuff I just reused and repurposed. And it, they already had the stuff. I just put it together into a system or a, in a way so it was useful again. I didn't realize my delay was so long. I didn't think I had it up that high. Let me just see here. Because I, I thought I had normal latency on. Let me just bring back up everything here. And eh, it's okay. Anyways. I'm going to make a kit from this lipstick container. Yes. Like I said, there is nothing I won't... E reuse as a resource or an item to create with yeah it's a lipstick yeah yeah now I've already hollowed it out there was something in here not to show the brand but it's hollow this comes out and all this good stuff so I'm gonna make a kit out of this right now well, let me just put this on the table right here so you guys can see it as a whole. So I'm gonna make a kit out of that. Now there's probably different kits you could probably could potentially make out of this, but I'm gonna be making a kit that you would so like to see, right? Oh wait, I think I just gave it away with that clue right there. Because that was a play on words. So I had to be making a sewing kit out of it. Now, I have some of the items already ready in advance to save some time. Which include... Some needles. Some sewing needles. Now these are just basic needles. Maybe within time I'll add uh, needles to have a bigger eye, eye on it. But for now, this is what I have. Now, what I'd also add... You'll see this really small thing on the table already. Here, that's a neodymium magnet. That came from headphones. So, like headphones like these and stuff like that, I actually kind of reused that stuff and scrapped the, uh, well, reused the magnet, the neodymium magnet in those headphones. Because so sometimes I come across that stuff. So, real easy, just break it open, pop up the neodymium magnet, and you can use it for air stuff. And it's pretty good for needles because. It keeps the needles, the sewing needles together. And if you drop it or whatever, you know, sometimes it's hard to pick up a needle off a table. Like right now I'm trying to pick up pick that up, that's hard. You know, I could slide it to the edge and stuff like that. But with a Neil Demon magnet, look at that. I easily picked it up. I easily picked it up. And it keeps the needles, uh, the sewing needles kind of together. So you're not loose in the, in this container in this case. So I'll be adding that into this sewing kit. 
sewing slash repair kit, something along the lines of that. Now the next thing I'm gonna add in here is a, just a little piece of uh, hot glue. Hot glue could be used to repair stuff, kind of bind things together temporarily. Now hot glue, as I find, it's not a permanent fix by any means, and it's very vulnerable to heat. Because I've tried it before. <laughs> I tried it before. I'm like, I went into the shower with something. I'm like, it just kind of melted out and pulled apart because of the heat. But something like that, I'm gonna add in. Now, clearly, you need thread to go with a needle. Clearly. Oh, thanks, Iron. Yeah, yeah. I've been using the the magnets a lot. They're very useful, and technically, technically, related to the survivalism part of things, a needle and a magnet, you can magnetize it and get a general north-south direction. You know, you suspend the needle on a leaf, something like that, float it, kind of read it one way, like this. About 50 times, give or take, and I can magnetize that needle, give and get a general north-south direction. If I suspended this on water with something, whatever, it would probably point that north-south direction, or at least magnetic north, <laughs> I should say. But anyways, oh, I gotta pick up that needle. I think this I have a magnet. So I'll put that down. Let me just put this to the side just a little here. Let's see. Oh yeah, so I need some uh, thread with it obviously to st stitch with and stuff like that. Now, obviously I need a way to hold that thread. So I'm gonna reuse something again which I have shown in a previous live stream and I kind of hinted on it in that stream and all that stuff but basically what I'm going to reuse is in this case or repurpose is an expired uh, credit card this could be a gift card debit card something like that as you can see right there I'll just show it on the screen. You know what the numbers say right here? I just say, just say, <laughs> just say. <laughs> I just happen to have one that says expired on that day. Mm. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using this. I'll just flip it over. I'll be using this to store the thread. Now, it does fit in here. Now it's a little big, so I don't have to cut it down. Now I have to cut this now. So let me grab a pair of scissors here. Just grabbing a pair. Of, ah, actually, I'm gonna grab this other pair. It's probably better. Grab this other pair of scissors I have. These are, uh, I guess, for lack of a better word, full tank scissors. So there's no plastic in here. I got these one, these for like a dollar at a yard sale, grad sale, church sale, whatever you want to call it. I was just like, yeah, I'll take these. They're full tang. So I'm just going to kind of look at this and just kind of estimate here. Maybe around right there. Cut that. Now these corners right here, what I'm going to do is just take the scissors and just cut around it. Kind of round it off. Let's see. Now that should actually fit inside. Oh yeah, it'll fit inside. So now I can store the thread around it. Now, if you don't have this tool, air tool that I will be showing, you can just do this with scissors. But well, let's just say I acquired a different tool, so I'm gonna start using it a little bit more often, which is sitting off to the side here. I got this also at a grad sale. That's kind of a hole punch kind of thing. I've been using it. It's very useful actually. 
Ever since I got it, I feel like I'm like, I keep doing this. Especially when I've been making these some of these sewing kits. So basically, what I'm gonna do here, I'll flip it over. I'll probably start on this side right here. I'm just gonna make a couple couple holes. And basically, what I'm doing is kind of making a flat spool. Now you can technically do this with cardboard. You may have seen that on our videos and stuff like that. Like, here's a pre-made, off-the-shelf, store-bought kind of sewing kit. You'll see right here. Let me just show it on camera. Yeah, see, it's got cardboard on it. Well, yeah, that'll work. It's probably lightweight, too. But if it got wet or anything like that, you know, may change things. Piece of plastic. And I'm reusing this, too. I don't have to worry about it getting wet. I just have to make it though. So what I'm gonna do is probably just punch it in right about there. Yeah, there we go. So now I've got a hole right there as you can see. Go to the opposite side. And go kind of um, parallel to it as much as possible. So it lines up. You'll hear that snap. And right beside that hole that I just made the first time, I'm gonna make another one. So and then these circles not making. I guess they're gonna overlap a little. Now if you had a lot of thread, you can increase the distance or the how far in. Now you don't want to go too far in because you don't want the center too thin. It's clearly if it's too thin, it's more, uh, it's easier for it to snap. So I probably not gonna go that far in, but I can always widen it going this way. So that's what I do right now. And of course, if you want, you could take a pair of scissors and just kind of round off these corners a little. Which I'm going to do right now, just kind of round them off. So now they're rounded off. So less likely for the thread or whatever kind of thread like thing I'm going to put on to kind of get snagged on it, for example. So let me welcome into the room with a big boom! Oh, great 1107! Hi, Gray! How's it going? Um, I'll just randomly put this up on the screen too. Why not? Thank you for taking the time to join me on live creation mode time with me. I appreciate it. So coming back to this right here. What I'm going to do is actually make it a narrow one right, just a little bit over, maybe around right there. You'll hear that snap because I'm breaking through it. And I may have to actually uh, remove some of it underneath because it's getting clogged. But hopefully it'll still work for a little bit longer for me. Press this. There we go. That's why I've been liking this so much because I can make nice clean holes. It looks not only nice but uniform too. Because I've actually done this with scissors before and I was just like, it always looks so crooked and stuff like that. Because it's hard to make a circle with something straight, especially on a piece of plastic. But a simple tool like this, really easy. And I. I can use this for other stuff too, like leather and stuff like that, or punch in, punch something else. Probably could do it with paper too. So again, I'm going to overlap the circles just a little. Go to the other side and do the exact same thing. And again, what I'm going to do is just round off these corners here. 
with a pair of scissors. So it's less likely for that uh, thread to snag on something. Now, I could actually go in a little bit deeper, just a little bit deeper. So I'm not actually going just a little bit deeper, not too much. Like I said, try not to make the center too thin. You want a little bit in there. That way, you know, you're less likely to actually snap it. So I'm put that right there, maybe around right there. Snap that. Make it just some minor adjustments. And basically, I'm making a, a spot right here to put the thread around. Similar to using a piece of cardboard like what they have on this pre-made kit. Now this, I did not buy. This was graciously donated to me by Wes S. So, thanks Wes, by the way. I haven't used this yet. Because I've been making the sewing kits. But I do appreciate him uh, sending it to me. Speak of which, then I have to do this right now. Oh, I guess I can use the needles. I'm gonna remove these extra little things I have in here. I'll do it later. So the next thing that you're probably gonna need to do is make a slit in these. So when you're finished wrapping the thread around, you have a spot to kind of hold the end of the thread. So I'm going to start right about there. No more than halfway through. Just a thin slit. Not... So you can uh, bend this back, put the thread in, and it will kind of hold your thread in place. And do this again. To the next one. And like I said, this will fit inside now. So, next thing. Now you got something to hold the thread, well now you need thread. Now, for, you can easily get thread, you probably could get uh, a bulk size and just kind of make these as you deem fit. Or maybe you already have thread or something like that. Or maybe you have something like this and you're just kind of remaking a kit into like something pocket size like what I'm going to do right here. So, that's what I'm going to do. Bye! Now, you can actually use other things similar to it, maybe a little bit stronger than normal thread, like this amount of bank line that I have right here, or this other bank line I have right here. So, let me just remove this real quick here. No, actually, I'm not using the other bank line that I have. So, this bank line has three strands. It's twisted together. I could easily sew with something like this. I would use this for like a backpack or something. Something a little where there's gonna be a little bit more weight. Where a little stronger type of uh, cordage would be cool. I mean good to use. Just put this aside right here. I do have some thread on the side. I do have it. See, I actually have it on one already. Now, I'm going to see if this actually fits. Oh, actually, it does fit. <laughs> so, that was the example of making it. And its finished product would probably be something like this. So right here I got normal thread and right here on this one right here this one right about there that's actually uh it's either inner strands of paracord which could also be used not the one of seven strands but the one of seven strands and you twist it to undo it so you might be able to see that. So, 
I could easily just add this in. Now, you probably want, you know, white and black, at least. At least that much. But, you know, depending on the situation or whatever, maybe color's not as big of an issue. But, you know, I'm just going to add this in. So, I'll slap that in. So, now, I've got some thread in there. I got a neat, a little bit of uh, a needle with a magnet to hold it together. A little bit of hot glue, for example. Well, let's see, what else can I add to this kind of sewing slash repair type of kit? That I'm using this. Uh, let me make sure I'm free. I'm using this. We're using this uh, lipstick container for. Let me just put that to the side. So as you can see, I could put the lid on, put the lid on. Easily put this in my pocket if I was putting it in my pocket. Easily put it in a bag, in a, a different kit. As long as it fits, it's in there. Now what I could do is, actually, and I think I'm going to do it. Let's see what I can do more with this, since I still have some room in here. Quickly checking on some messages. Alright. Oh, might as well have a sip of coffee while I'm at it too. Cheers. I do appreciate everyone dropping in. Even for a minute or two, I appreciate it. And taking a little bit of your time to see what I'm creating. Which is actually done be a lot of uh, things tied together. <laughs> Let's just say. I'm going to tie it all together today. It's more... Survival preparedness related than crafting. But I guess sewing can be a form of crafting. Let's see, what else can I add into this? Um, I got an idea. Let's see if I can actually put this in. Let's see if this will actually fit in here. I think this will actually fit in here. Oh yeah, it does. I'm going to add this really, really mini binder clip. <laughs> Just as a clip. So if I'm sewing something and I want to keep things together I can kind of use this to kind of keep it together so if I was sewing something like this up again and I wanted to keep the material together while I'm sewing I could just easily do something like that or maybe I'm trying to melt something together or something like that use that hot glue or something like that so I'll add that in so fits Oh, there's still room. What else can I add? A sewing kit. Um, what else could I add here? Hmm. I guess there is probably one thing I could add. Hmm. I thought I had it nearby. I can add like little pins in and stuff like that. You know, maybe add some of these pins in. Maybe a paper clip or two. Let's see what else could I add into this here. Oh, thanks, Gray. Because I actually came up with it the third time when I was in creation mode. I was just like, I was just kind of, oh, I need something. I'm like, oh, I had something. So, I don't see how useful it is. It came in use. Uh, it came in use. It, it became useful when I needed it. I was just like, huh? Okay. Welcome back, Iron Fire Horse. By the way. Now, I have to check this. I'm not sure if I can actually get this bank line through. I have to actually check right here. I'm just gonna pull the contents out real quick. And on the bright side, that magnet sticks to everything. 
<laughs> That's why I like Neo Demon Magnets. They're very, very good to use for a lot of little things like this. I think that's why I'm so uh, attracted to it. Yeah, I just said that. <laughs> no, I, I have actually sewn with this bank line before, but I think I actually had to use one of the bigger needles I have. I don't have a spare one for this kit yet at the moment, but once I do, I can add a, a bigger needle in that has a bigger eye hole, so I can actually get something like this uh, bank line in. Now, I do have some other bank ones, so I'm going to see if that would actually fit beforehand. Just to make sure that the thread or cordage that I'm using to sew with can actually fit the needles that I have in there. You know, before the situation arises and be like, aw, it doesn't fit. I should have checked it beforehand. Alright? And try to make sure that it's in a ready to go state. Now, I have this other bank one that I have right here, so. It, it may be more suitable for it. You can see that. I think this is number eight, number nine bank line. That other one's number twelve. This is much thinner. It's got two strands. It's twisted, and I do believe when it's whole like this, it's about fifteen pound test, give or take. I have I've actually tried it with a known weight, so I should be able to at least get eight untwisted on that one of two strands in here. So I'm just gonna roll some out here. I just have uh, an Arbor Canadian jam knot around it. Just so I can uh, keep it together. And then again, this bank line was gracefully donated to, to uh, gifted to me too. So I do appreciate that they sent it to me. I just don't have as much of this ver uh, this number eight bank line as I have that number twelve. So I'm just gonna undo that real quick. I'm just gonna get a little bit out. I probably don't need that much. So I'm just gonna pull. Let's see. Put my foot down on it. Roll it up. See, this is why I like cordage on a spool. It's really easy to kind of deploy this. So if I, depending how much I need, I could be like, Shh, well, and if I didn't cut it or whatever, and I just kind of reusing it again, I can easily just roll it back up. I think that's why I like spools a lot, at least with longer amounts of cord or thread. But clearly, something like this is a little thick to put into a kit, a sewing kit like this that I'm making. That's why I'm going towards something like this. Now I'm just gonna use this one right here. Uh, let's say, oh yeah, I almost forgot. I have to check to make sure that the individual strand can actually be threaded into that these needles. That way I know beforehand and know that the, all the stuff in this kit can be worked together and it can actually work. So I'm just gonna put this down real quick. I have to. I have a stopper knob, a stopper knot at the top, so I'm gonna have to snip that off with a pair of scissors, cutting tool, knife, etc., etc. Open this up a little, and untwist this, and untwist it. It's probably easier if I act well. Hold on a sec. I gotta sit down for a sec so I can actually do this real quick. And I moved my stage prop. And yes, CR is right above me. <laughs> because CR is everywhere. There. There. Here. Oh, wait. I mean, here. Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> So let's see here, I'm just going to keep t untwisting this. I just want to see if this one of the two strands can I actually f f uh, f 
stick it through the eye of this needle. Now these are really small needles with small eye openings, so not sure. That's why I just want to make sure beforehand. So I'm not just putting in something, oh yeah, yeah, this is nice and strong, but I can't feed it through the eye of the needle. Well, then what's the point of that? At least in this case. Jeez, the struggles are real this time around. I'm trying trying to undo this. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not braided, so it's a little bit easier. But I'm just trying to separate it. I'm having a hard time trying to separate it right now. So come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, yeah. Uh, there we go, there we go. So I can isolate one strand just to see here. And now what I'm going to do here is kind of just compare it with something else I have. Yeah, this is what. Honestly, this inner strand of one of two strands of this number eight, I believe, bank line is much thicker. So I'm going to see here. So what I'm going to do here is actually grab a lighter out that I have here. And just kind of melt this, the tip, and kind of pull it out so it's thinned out a bit, and see if I can thread this ne the needle that I have for this kit, and make sure beforehand that this will work. So, in the time of need and stuff like that, I already know it's a, in a ready to go state. So I'm not, you know, I've already done all that trial and error beforehand, so I'm not. In the middle of wherever it, oh, it's too thick, you know, because I didn't take the time to check. So I'm just gonna do this real quick. See, if I, what I'm trying to do is thin this out. I've done this with fire thread before, and you know, I know there's like those uh, f threaders or whatever, but let's say you don't have one. Well, then what? People say use nail polish. Well, what happens if you don't got nail polish with you? Some people say use water. Well, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But what happens if you're in the desert? Then what? <laughs> you might have a lighter or a heat source or a fire in front of you, for example. So basically, I'm just melting it a little and just pulling it so it's thinner at the end. So hopefully, I can use it to thread the needle with. That's the idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, uh, Gray. Now, I don't have a spare one at the moment that I haven't committed already. And the buttons, well, I'll have, I'll probably graduate add buttons in that I can fit in there. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can fit buttons in here. I just want to thin this out a little. Let's see. Now, I know this would work with some of the wider eye needles that I have, but... Can this work with the smaller ones I have in this? So I'm just gonna grab one of the needles out here. Just kind of see. Now this is probably gonna be way too big of a cord. Hold on a second, one. I'm just gonna put something up on the screen temporarily. Hold on. Sorry about that everyone. You know, when you're live streaming, everyone wants to call you. When you're not live streaming, oh I'm not gonna call no one calls you, so let me just bring up everything back up here. Alright, I'm back, I'm back, alright, alright. Alright, sorry about that. 
I had to answer it. I had to answer the phone. Because it could be important, it could be important, it could be serious, right? So I don't want to be one of those people that put a, you know, their virtual life or secondary, second life ahead of their real life. So anyways, let's try this again. Now where did I put the needle? <laughs> oh yeah, that figures. I don't see the needle on the table now. Yeah, that figures. I dropped that needle, didn't I? I guess it'll show up. I'm glad I got spares of it. So I guess I'll be adding another one in because I can't see it right now. So anyways, coming back to this, I'm try trying to thread this fruit right now. Let's see, can I actually do this? Would this actually work? Now I think this is still too thick. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to put this bank line in. Yeah, it's. it seems like it could work, but I think it's just slightly too thick. So I'm going to try one more time with this. If it doesn't work, then I won't be able to add this bank line in until I add a needle that has a wider eye in it. Now, I do have our kits that actually have a wider eye, and I do have another one just over here that I've shown in the last live stream that I did during live creation mode time with CR, which was a couple days ago, or yesterday. So I'm going to do this again. Let's see. Try to thin this out. See if I can... I feel I it feels like I should be able to do this. So I'm just gonna see before I commit anything to it. Like I said, so that way I know beforehand. It is probably gonna be still too thick. But at least I'll know. Yeah, and for some reason I'm not seeing the needle right now. Oh come on. Oh, Maybe. Now, I'm going to do another trick here that I've done. You'll see that I thinned it out so it's thin right here. You might be able to see. Ah, I don't. The cordage is so thin you probably won't be able to see that. What I'm going to do is just take the scissors and just kind of make a point. And just see. Just see. And just see. So I'm going to kind of make a point on top of it. And see if I can thread it through. See if this is even possible in the first place. And since I'm having a hard time trying to pick up the needle, I'm gonna use that Neo Demon magnet. See? See how useful that is? No fuss, no muss. And see if I can actually do this. See, I can get part part of it in there. Oh oh oh. Yeah, see. I'm probably not. Oh, yeah. See, I didn't get all the way through all the cordage through. So it's possible I could do this, but I think what I'm gonna do is, when I get a larger eye, a need up with a larger eye in it, I'm actually gonna, um, what's it called? Put this bank line in. See, I'm trying to twist it so it's thinner. It feel. When I look at it, it, I'm like, it should be able to fit through. It's just tricky. It's just tricky. <laughs> yeah, sometimes those cool CCs don't really say what people say. So I'm going to try one more time. This. Let's see. I really think like I could do this, or it would work. Like I said, this is very thin, but yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna put this bank line away real quick. If I, if I, like I said, if I add a needle with a, a wider eye hole, then I'll probably put this bank line in. Until then, I want to make sure what I do put in is actually gonna work with this kit. So. Put the Neo, bang, Neo De Demon Magnet back onto that. Because I could still add more thread. There, like, there's lots of room in here still. 
Uh, let's see. So I can put that in there. Put a couple. I'll just put one paper clip and one uh, clothes pin, uh, safety pin in there, just for now. A little piece of hot glue I have in there. I mean, I still have, I still have room. Still have room in this sewing kit slash repair kit. Now, what I'm gonna do here is actually add. Add some tape in. I'm actually gonna add some tape in, because sometimes a repair, a temp, even a temporary repair, but using tape could at least, you know, get you back home or something like that. Until you know you can actually get something better. So I'm actually gonna now people add drill tape, duct tape, something like that. Being Canadian, and since I have access to it right now, because I bought like one at a yard sale and I had hockey tape in <laughs> I know right I'm real Canadian today on this live stream so I'm gonna actually add some in now I'm just thinking how I could put it on the outside yeah I could put it on the outside and guess being black you know it'll blend in but I'll increase the bulkiness because I'll start adding my many layers around now I could do it in a different way too, so I'm gonna see here. Let's see, what how could I do this? Now since since you see this later here from it, it's actually short uh taller than the width of the t uh, this hockey tape that I have. So if I find something to wrap it around, I could stick it, the tape on the top of the lid and have that. And it won't use any space in inside of this and it won't be on the outside so I don't have to worry about the sewing slash repair kit that I'm trying to make here being wider. I'm gonna try that out. And then try that out. Now I need now I need something kinda round now to kinda roll it up with. So what I'm gonna use here is Something very, very thin here. There's probably a few options that you could probably use. You can use a really, really thin straw, like this one right here. This straw is basically, I think it's from like Kool Aid or something like that. When I pick up the posit, I always see this all the time, and I have used this for our reasons. But let's say you didn't have one, what else? or you think it's too big still. What else could you use? Grabbing this pen here. You might be able to use the tube of a pen. So something like that. That is, I think it is thinner than the straw. Yeah, it is thinner than the straw. Or, well, yeah, it's barely thinner, but it is thinner. But what else could I use? 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 I dropped the lid. <laughs> what else could I use? And while I think about that, let me see what you guys are... You wanna you wanna make a sewing kit now, Gray? <laughs> One for each truck. Oh, okay, cool, cool. I mean, like I said in and it says it in the description. I mean, like I'm just kind of doing it with stuff I have. You know, do it with stuff what you have right now, Gray. Or maybe you're making a. Taking a pre-made kit and kind of making it as more of your own. You know, a lot of the stuff except for the scissors would actually fit in this kit. For the most part. I mean, the buttons will fit for sure. And all that stuff. 
So let's see what I can do here. Mm -hmm. Wow, I think I'm not, I don't know if this would work. I have no idea. It's something I have laying, laying around. I'm, see, I'm literally winging it right now, a little. and just kind of experimenting and just seeing. And I've never actually used this whole tape before, but... I don't know, where did I put the tape? Oh, there it is. I have no idea this is not work, so I'm just gonna try this out real quick. It is round. And hopefully it'll stick in there. And I can still cut it down to size to fit into this kit. And hopefully into the lid. And it is uh, kind of hollow. So I'm going to try this out. I have no idea if this is not work, by the way. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I've never... See, this is what I just used. Look at that. That's the spring from a lighter. Yeah. I keep forgetting that I actually took the flint out and from something and I had it laying around. So I'm basically using it as a way to roll up the tape. In this case, hockey tape. I'm just kind of lining it up a bit. Not sure how much I'm going to be able to get on. But because this the center is thinner, I should be able to get a little bit more than what I could do if I put it around a pen. I mean, wait, see, I got it around the pen right now, but I'm rolling it around this, the spring from where it would push up on the flint so you can stretch your lighter on a f flint base lighter. So that's what I'm doing right now. Of course, tape has multiple uses. The only limitation with tape is how much you have. Virtually, you can do anything with tape. A lot of things with tape. The only li real limitation is how much you have. If you have, I mean, you, if you got plenty of rolls of it and stuff like that, you can do a lot of different things with it. And of course, you know, certain different tapes have different uh, characteristics, qualities to them. Some are more sticky, some are more durable, some are more tack, you know, grippy, like this grill, uh, grill tape, like this hockey tape. Maybe something might be stronger, like grill tape or T-Rex tape and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna roll this up. Here. Oh yeah, thanks, Greg. That's, that's very nice of you. I was just kind of, you know, Thinking about it, you know, I think I saw a couple of sewing kits and I was just like kind of thinking, I'm like, I, I don't mind the cardboard I get, I just don't, if it got wet, the, the cardboard's gonna get soggy then. And you would have to let it dry out. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna get your sewing kit wet, but I mean, what happens if you're out in the rain trying to repair something and, you know, this cardboard that's in, like, you may see what happens if that gets wet and it might tear on you at least the card will kind of hold up a little bit easier and you know you're reusing something repurposing something like this old expired gift card credit card prepaid card debit card so it's not in the landfill too and you're reusing it and it's back into a useful state and that cardboard that you wanted to use well you can go recycle it too Oh yeah, see, I, I'm starting to get a little bit of tape around it. As you, uh, you, you won't be able to see. As you can see there, I'm starting to get around it. I'm just kind of lining it up. I'm just going around it. You know, tape is one of those things, it just depends what you're doing, I guess, right? And I guess, you know, grill tape's kind of like, you know, on the high end of things.
Uh, you've had uh, tape become messed up when it's stored. Oh, from the stickiness, right? Maybe from the heat and stuff like that. That adhesive kind of kind of mixes in and becomes hard to kind of undo. Now, another thing I always keep in mind with tape, especially like for anyone that uses it uses it often, and this could include like mesh tape too. So if you use mesh tape for like um, when you were you doing like drywall and stuff like that, like you would put this mesh tape, then you put put the plaster on top, and all this stuff. I mean, I have a whole roll, and literally a whole roll of this stuff. Let me just bring an example out here. Yeah, I got a lot of tape. <laughs> I got a lot of tape right here. That doesn't include the grill tape and the duct tape I have. That's all on a different roll. But I don't need reflective tape in a sewing kit, probably. I don't mind this, uh, this hockey tape. As you can see, that would still fit it. I could actually probably put all this tape that I have on this right now into it, which I'm probably gonna do. Let me just see. Uh, yeah, it's possible, it's possible. I don't know in this way, maybe not so much because obviously I'm starting to remove a lot of the material off of it. But it's not too heavy. It's probably slightly heavier than cardboard, but I don't have to worry about water and stuff like that. I'm slowly putting this tape around it. Just trying to line it up as best as I can. And I'll mention another tip at the end when I actually finish rolling this up. I'm probably not going to put the whole thing. Although I probably could, I'm just gonna see, because I don't want to handle the tape overly. That's the thing about tape. You don't want to handle it too much either, because the oils in your skin will kind of, you know, affect the adhesive part. I'm trying not to handle it too much. At least t not touching the sticky part, which is actually in front of you guys right now. What you can see in front, which is actually, because this is the back. This is the, well, actually, this is not the sticky part. This is the sticky part, I should say. Just kind of rolling it up. I've never rolled tape <laughs> around a spring from a lighter. But it's actually what I had nearby. I actually, so this is new for me right now. I've never done this. I, this was not part of the plan. I kind of planned the sewing kit a little, but I did not plan to do it like this, let's just say. Yeah, I've had issues with tape before too. I have a couple other ways you can store tape. There's the card method, there's the rolling method, there's the layering method. Stuff like that. I generally, depend, depending, I generally prefer either this roll method or the layering method. I'm not as big of a fan now of using a card now. But you do get a lot on it though. Because it doesn't, on a card, I find it's harder to unroll it because it's not round. And I prefer this layering method of layering tape because it's quicker to deploy it. Because you just rip a piece off and use it. But the only downside is it's not non-continuous. But some of these, some of the tape that I do have stored like that, it's really, really thin. I have four feet on it and it's like really, really thin. But the only downside is it's non-continuous.
Yeah, that'll probably be good. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna need more than that. Yeah, maybe I'll add a little bit more. Now I'm gonna cut it. Now another tip to keep in mind about tape is well actually I'll unroll a little bit more. Why not? Well <laughs> I am just seeing how much it'll fill in on the inside. Cause I'm only I'm putting this on the inside lid right here. So I'm trying to fill up the space as much as possible. So that's why I'm kinda taking a little bit more time at this at the moment. For myself. Nope. And trying to line it up as best as I can. But yeah, tape is pretty useful. Pretty useful. Could make an easy repair, or at least a temporary repair, or I could use thread and tape to kind of, until I, you know, get home or something like that. You know, back to a sewing machine or something like that. You know what? I have no idea if I can fit all this on, but I'm going to try. But yeah, coming back to this tip here. And it's a very simple tip, and most people already know about this, about tape already. And especially this mesh tape that I've been using while helping a buddy out is that kind of doubling it back, folding it back kind of deal. Because one of the really annoying things, and I'm pretty sure everyone can agree, is where the hell is the end of the tape? Where's the start of the tape? Right? 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 It's very annoying. It's very annoying to try to find that the end of the tape, the beginning of it, and you're trying to find it. You know, but doubling it back makes that kind of like spot that you can actually tell the difference and you can pull it. So that's something I keep in mind. So I think that should be good. Oh yeah, that probably should be good. That's, that's eh, a little bit more. <laughs> I think I got a little bit more room. All right, I'm gonna cut it. Right around there, as I drop the rest of it. Now what I'm going to do right at the top is just fold it back. So I have a kind of a pole area. Wrap the rest of it up. So when I go use it, I can easily see this kind of spot right here and easily deploy this. So. And because it's round, it's easier to deploy technically because all I have to do is kind of just whoosh, go like that. And taking the zero one here that I have from the roll and making sure I put a uh, doubling it back just just a little. You don't even need a lot of it. Just like just enough. Even if you just do a corner of it. That's probably good enough still. So that's what I'm going to do. See, I just did it on a corner. That way I can tell the difference. And it's not going to be sticky there, so I can easily pull that. And I'm trying to, like, where's the end of the tape? You know? Especially with something like clear tape. It's very, very annoying. And it's something I always try to keep in mind. Regardless of what kind of tape it is. Because that's always an issue with tape. I find. I mean, it's, some of it you can tell the difference, but then there's like clear tape or this mesh tape that I've used and this kind of um, hockey tape. I'm like, where's the end? You know, and you're trying to scratch at it and try to find it and it's taking up time. You should do gear the tape. Okay. <laughs> do gear the tape. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm, I'll pretend I understand. <laughs> now, let's see. I'm going to try something here. I have no idea if this is actually going to work. But first things first, I, I got to cut this in off. I think I'm gonna have to get a multi-tool. 
I need some something a little bit more uh, stronger to kind of cut that with. So I'm just gonna grab grab a multi tool here. It's just a Gerber. Then use the snips on it to kind of snip that that wire here. There we go. So it's nice. Now this is hollow. So I'm going to see here, just to aid in the using of it here, I am going to use some air cordage I have laying around. This is some miscellaneous cordage I have, something I found, I'm going to try this out, maybe, eh, it might work. I'm going to use it so I can actually have a spot to pull. Let's see, I'm gonna have to sharpen these scissors. Just gonna heat up the end real quick. With lighter. So it's nice good. And I feed that cordage through here. Now I don't know, this might be still be too thick. I thought should might be too thick still, but the idea is Yeah, it's still too thick. Oh wait, wait! Remembering that bank line, remember what I said to untwist uh, about untwisting it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna untwist it. Now it's thinner. Now we'll try that. So basically, now I'm feeding it through the opening. Come on, come on. Now this would be easier with like a straw or something like that or like a pen because the tube's kind of, well it's hollow but it's not like open, <laughs> for lack of a better term. I'm going to have to heat up the end, it's snagging. Alright. Alright, so I'm gonna put this in. Hopefully, kind of turn it. Okay, you could. Okay, before I lose it there, you can see now it's on there. So I'm gonna make that so it's now I have a spot to hold and I can just. Because it's. Well. Pretty much a wheel with an axle. So I can easily unroll that tape and hold this, well, once you see it. Now, hopefully I get enough of it here. Oh, Drop my mouse. Hold on a sec. <laughs> hold on a sec. <laughs> I dropped my mouse. I gotta make sure I don't screw that up. <laughs> see, I got my mouse right here. I dropped the mouse off the table. Alright, right, I'll put it back. Um, so what I'm going to do here, at the end of, you can see that it's right there. I'm just going to put a stopper knot. Over, overhand knot. <laughs> Especially if I can get it to go without sliding out. Oh, okay. Dog ear the tape. Okay. <laughs> and I feel better with that kind of expression or phrase. So I'm just going to cut the end of this air end here. Right around there. Putting our stopper knot in there. So the idea is, see, this might be a little too short to work with. I can't put a double, double knot in there, so I'm just gonna put the arbor knot in, because I can actually get in there. Around this, arbor knot, can you jam knot? So 
So I have something like this. And now, if I wanted to deploy this, you'll see that. Look at that. I should be able to roll it. Look at that. Look how easy that is to thoroughly easy. Now, I'm using a spring, so it's a little bit different, but if it was a hollow tube, it would easily be like shoot. And I can easily still roll up the excess. So when I'm deploying this, using it, it's actually going to come off the tape, the spool round like a wheel and axle. Yes. Like a wheel and axle. You know, wheel and axle is one of those simple machines. Pretty much, in a nutshell, kind of did it in the same way. See, so yeah, I think the spring's gonna come out a little, and yeah, that's okay. That's okay. It should be. It should work. Now I should be able to put that at the top here. Let me see. Make sure I'm in frame. Show you guys right here too. So I'll put that inside. And I still, hopefully I did this right. Hopefully I did this right. Hopefully I did this right. I should still be able to. See, I think I made it too thick. Still, it might still be too thick. The idea is I should still be able to close this. And use the space in the lid. That's the idea anyways. That was the whole idea behind this part of it. And it's a little tight. It's a little tight. A little tight. It's a little tight. Yeah, it's a little tight. See, it's not quite perfect. It's not quite perfect here. But, that's okay. That's okay. Because, I still have room inside. So I'll just kind of switch it around. So I'll just switch this around. I'll make the room. I'll still make the system work. So we'll bring everything back up. Put the tape back and the tape the thread back in. Some of this larger stuff, I'll just kind of put at the top if I can. I just, uh, see if I can get tape in there still. Now you'll see that my thing sticking out just a little here. That's all right. I can actually trim it. So I'm gonna try this out. I know sometimes when I create sometimes I do this, a little trial and error. A little bit of trial and error at times. Roll roll these corners here. And ideally not cut the cord or thread that I have in there. We'll see how well this works. Like I said. A lot of the times when I'm making these kits, it's not really the difficulty of like putting it together, it's actually like fitting everything inside and getting it in a certain way. So I'm using up the space wisely as much as possible. As much as possible. And dropping the tape on the ground. I was about to say, where's the tape? <laughs> like, how do I lose tape that I just dropped like two seconds ago? It's off to the side more. So, let's see here. I sh let's see if I can actually do this. Experiment. Oh, yeah, see? Right now, I got the thread and the tape in here. So, ideally, I should be able to get everything else in here. Because it's on a magnet and it's stuck together. Now, it's sticking out a little. Not quite. I'm starting to make a little bit of progress in this. Come on, come on, wait. Oh, okay.
Now, clearly, this wouldn't work with some of the larger needles, the little longer, but, you know, you can make a kit that's just longer then. It doesn't have to be a container like this. It could be a longer container that you have. I mean, you could be using a lot of different containers. This is just an example right here. It doesn't have to be like a lipstick container like I have right here that I'm trying to do with. It could be whatever you have currently for your own, uh, at your own place. Now, let's see if I can actually still fit everything in here. Now, this, this is probably not going to be ideal yet, because things are sticking out, but I can't close it. See? All that stuff that I just did is now in here. Now, it's not probably the most organized, but it is in there. So, if anything, if I get a larger container or a taller container, I'll just kind of migrate the contents from here into that container. So, this kit could easily change. When it, I just made that from scraps what, with what I had laying around. Spent credit card, debit card, prepaid, you know, MasterCard, Visa, that kind of thing, debit card. A little miscellaneous cordage, some tape. So I just made a sewing kit, a very more simplistic sewing kit. It's got thread in it. It's a little or I should say uh, sewing slash repair kit easily fits in my pocket it's got a little bit of tape a little bit of stuff in here I mean like I said it's not perfect I may still have to revise this one but in the meantime I could put it in a bag that I have which is sitting in their room it's actually I was the reason why is because I'm actually making the kit for that bag so that's actually why I'm doing this. So I'm not just doing this just to show. I'm actually doing this to actually use later. That's why hopefully in time I'll have the system much better. The deployment of any one of the items will be like like that fast. Not messing around and stuff like that. Now if you wanted to you could pre-thread your needle. Something like that. I may work on this a little bit more as time goes on. That's cool, go fish. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Let me just put this up a little bit more. I'll just leave that right there. And the thing is, no one know. You wouldn't even people. If you showed this to anyone, they'd be like, "Oh, that's lipstick." No, it's a sewing kit. Sewing slash. Sewing slash repair kit. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, and they'd be like, you made that? And I'd be like, yeah. You know, and you show them the contents, they'll be like, wow, can you make me one? I know some people are actually ask me that certain times when I make something and I show them, they're like, can you make me one? I'm like, I'll show you how to make one. I'll show you how to do this on your own. I mean, I love making stuff for other people, but I also like when people start making stuff on their own i love when other people start creating because it i get so excited when other people start creating i'm just like whatever it is there's something about that creating in like a group effort it's like baking a pie together with a friend to like making a shed with a friend there's something about that I love so much. It's, I don't know. See, I really do get excited about creating. I really, really do. And those two examples I've actually done. Like, I've actually helped someone build a shed from scratch. And it was lots of fun. Lots of fun. And they're like, do you need any, do you want anything for helping me? I'm like, no. Helping, helping you create was like, all I needed and besides if I didn't know how to create or make or build something like that before now I have a little bit more experience in it because I've actually done it so that's pretty much in another nutshell why I love creating so much and why I want to promote it on the channel 
as much as I do because that's what I do and that's why I have this as the channel name a second point up there and that's why I will always be known as the one that creates a lot that's with an EH by the way because I am Canadian by the way so FYI <laughs> So let me just put this Gerber multi-tool away before I forget here. Always put your tools away when you're creating so it's ready for the next time. You know, so it's, everything's in that ready to go state. I'm just gonna check up on some messages right real quick here. Just checking up on some messages and making sure that I have kind of talked about what I want to say. I'm making sure I actually say what I'm saying because I have a list of things that I wanted to make sure I said so I'm double checking that right now. That's why you won't be able to see it because it's actually some the uh, creator side of things so I just kind of making sure I have that all kind of good and there's a reason too. Oh yeah, no, I keep forgetting it's right here. Isn't it? Isn't it right here? Oh, no, it's not right there. Oh, here it is. I was making. So, yes, so I got a, some a thread and needle in here, a little bit of tape. I wish I could put the bank line in, in there, the bank line cordage in there, but I'll have to see. And I, like I said, I'll be revising this pocket sewing kit, pocket sewing kit with repair options. And like I said, I, I was just reusing some resources. Stuff I already had on hand already. So, do you guys want to see the next creation? Yeah, there's still more. There's still more. There's still more. I still have something lined up. This was just the kit part of this video or live stream. You guys want to see more? Leave me one on the screen on the side chat if you want to see some more. You guys want to see some more? I don't hear ya. Wow, you guys are thinking about that. There's a creation that I made a long time ago. I'll just leave that on the screen for now. I made this a long time ago. Oh, let me fold. <laughs> turn it the right way. That's a hard, by the way. I made that when I was young. When I was still kind of learning how to sew, I guess, for the first time. I made this, it's kind of like a pot holder, I guess, for lack of a better phrase. As you can see, it's got veggies on it and stuff like that. This is, this is a very, this is very old creation. It may be actually older than some people I know. Because <laughs> I remember when I was in school, learning how to sew and stuff like that, we uh, had to make an apron. I think I still actually have it, but it's in a closet right now. I won't get it, but... I had some scrap material, so I kind of just made a heart. So. And like always, I do appreciate everyone dropping by for a minute or two, however long, checking checking this creation mode timeout as and sharing that love heart. <laughs> I mean, the time with me. So this is something I made a long time ago. My stitching is actually better on this. I swear it is. But this is obviously using like a sewing machine. And basically, if anyone's not aware, you know, you just inside out, then you kind of invert it inside out. So all the stitching's hidden on the inside. Except for on here, because obviously I had to put the stitching somewhere and tie it up at the top or sew it at the top. But this is something I made a long time ago at school. I still have it. Because, well, I still have it. <laughs> it reminds me. 
It reminds me why I love creating so much. And why cooking is another form of creating. And that's why I like cooking too. And kind of experimenting with that kind of stuff too. Just like that exciting video that I did the other day about an omelet. So you haven't checked that out. It's in the list of uh, videos I have. So you might want to drop by and check out that exciting video. You might find it very... Uh, different let's just say it was something different I decided to try out just just for fun it tasted really good by the way oh my, oh my gosh it was so good it tasted so good that I almost feel like I want to make another one now oh I'm getting one <laughs> <laughs> when you were a little boy in school. <laughs> when I was a wee little kid and really much shorter. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mind keeping little things like that. It reminds me of it. I like keeping the creations I make, for the most part. And kind of creating for other people too. Like, for example... This draw type egg, you may put Tinder in it or whatever. All reclaimed, reused items. I never spent anything on this. This is all reused. All reused. This this one right here. Every every part of this was reused. From things that I found. Including the cordage, the cord lock, and the material used to making it. Now, I do believe the one I made in the video, right, draw tie type of uh, pouch, I think that's what it's called. I think I have Tinder in as part of the label, but that one I made in the video, I actually gave that to a friend. I gave it to her, to them as a gift, and they love it very much. They really do. I was just like, oh, you love it? I can make you another one. <laughs> I just need the materials to doing it. The cordage is not that difficult to find. And this cord lock that I have on it, that was just scavenged off of a pair of gloves, for example, like, uh, like gloves like these. Something I just find during the winter time. And I was just like, you know, and I scrapped that off. You know, and cut it off and use it. I actually have like a Off to the side here. Actually, I'll, I'll show you guys this sneak peek right here. I have a lot of it. See? Those are cord locks. I never bought them. These are all reclaimed, re repur repurposed, reused from our clothes of clothing, like that glove, similar to that glove. And these are just ones I found. These are all just ones I found. So I can make more pouches like that if I wanted to, or use use these for whatever reason. And yes, here I do have a see organized. <laughs> it's nicely organized with binder clips and stuff like that, and other clips. I keep it together on this clip, so it's nice and organized. So when I want to go grab one or use one. Boom, I can easily get to one. So this is just something more recent that I have. So you guys are gonna sneak peek on something like this. And I just hang it up right beside me here. <laughs> yes, yes. Jeez, I really should aim this better. Yes, there we go. Let me aim this better. It's actually proper. Yeah, yeah close enough. <laughs> I'm trying to get my CR away from my text right here. Man, I can't see in the real world, but I can see it on my display right now. Alright, the so one, alright. Hey, thanks, uh, Gray. Thanks. Yeah, that's just some, 
Well, because I tried to keep it organized, so when I want to go use this stuff, I can easily just grab it and not fuss and must for it or try looking everywhere just to find something I want to use. That's why I keep it together as much as possible. That includes other stuff along the same lines. Trust me, there's stuff right beside me. It's well organized. As organized as I can get it. That's another form of creating for me is like organization. Because it allows me to create the space or create um, more space or create this more uh, functional or uh, functional type of space. So when I'm creating, I'd be like, Mm, do to do, do my, you know, whatever I'm doing. At all. I can use a binder clip. Boom, grab one off, use it, put it back on. Kind of deal. Oh, I need uh, like I have other little things too. I'll actually show you guys. Why not? Why not? Why not? You guys are gonna get a sneak peek here. Not a lot of people have seen a lot of this stuff, but see, same thing. Same idea, organization. So if I need a spare carabiner, yeah, like these are not walking carabiners and stuff like that. You can see a piece of paracord right here. Here's another, here's another camel one that I got gifted to me from a subscriber and stuff like that. Here, here's a blue one that I did find and all this other stuff. I don't know. And these other ones I have, and these little short little ones. And basically, it's all hung up. So if I need that, I can go grab one easily. That's why I kind of like doing it like this. And you might have seen that this other organizer that I made for cordage, which is, I'm not going to go into the great detail behind it. And you guys want to see that? You know, why not? Why not? It's just over here. Let me just go grab it. I've shown this how to organize shorter amounts of cordage or shorter amounts of line. Same idea compared to that stuff. Look at that. That's a lot of cordage. I know, right? Look at that. Yeah. That's how I organize a little bit of shorter amounts of cordage. Carabiner at the top. De uh, the de de details are in the video on how to do this. This is not that complicated. But with a little knowledge of some knots and stuff like that. And a few materials like PVC I have here. A little carabiner. You can make something like this. Or something similar. And yes, I. ever since I've done this. It's so easy if I need some extra little cordage, boom, I got it. I got it. I got it. It's well organized. And it does not, I cannot tangle this. I can do whatever I want to this. It really doesn't matter because it's all separate. <laughs> and I just hang that on the back of a door. Yeah, exactly, right? I, I don't like wasting time trying to cr when I'm creating and trying to find stuff. I mean, it's different if I'm trying to find a very specific thing to fit inside or whatever, a specific size container, but if it's something like a paper clip or something, I'd be like, oh, I want to put a paper clip in. Well, if it's organized, if your paper clip collection or whatever is organized maybe in a bin or something, you could easily be like, boom, grab it, use it put it in that kid, whatever it is, or whatever you're making, and it's done, it's done. Not, oh, where did I put them? I think I have them in their room. Is it in the drunk drawer? You know, stuff like that. I've been trying much more to organize stuff just because, well, it's easier to create. Like you, yeah, right? It's easier to create stuff when it's more organized because when you want to grab something to use, it's there, ready to go, be like, hey, I can easily just, like, literally, I could grab, like, a binder clip, uh, a little non-locking carabiner, a little bit of cordage, and 
do something. Matter of seconds. Like literally, I probably could just boom, 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 tie a few knots in, whatever it is, and go from there. Now, with that said, I'm not the most organized person. I'm still working on it like everyone else, right? I still have my messes too, but I'm trying to develop the system so as I make progress in it. I mean, I've rearranged a lot of things at times. I'm just like, you know, and trying to use up the space a little bit more. You know, a lot of those things that you hear on the how people organize and stuff when they're trying to use up like vertical space, space underneath like a uh, bed or something like that. Because I realized too, as part of the preparedness part of it when you're prepping stuff like that, organization is important too. As much and using up the space. So maybe you have like extra food underneath your bed, you know, extra freeze dry food, something like that, you know. You know, old case of mountain house underneath your bed. You know? Well, it's not taking up any room. As long as you rotate it and know how long it can last for, should be good. Like, I remember when I used to travel a lot and stuff like that. I don't do it as much as I wanted to, but when I was staying at someone's place, I, I saw like a whole bunch of two liter bottles of water and stuff like that. And they were kind of stacking it up and stuff like that. I was just like, and they were trying to use vertical space. And their kind of apartment wasn't even that big, to be honest, like really small, to be honest. And that's another thing. If you have a small space and you don't have a lot of room, well, you know, go up. You might not have this horizontal room, but most of us have a lot of vertical space still that we can use. So like sh things like shelves and stuff like that, I find, you know, if you can get your hands or on bins or something like that, those compartment bins you might be able to see at like, you know, stores and stuff like that, those free compartment bins, five compartment bins, you know, maybe it's on wheels or something like that, you know, those can help you organize, especially if you can subdivide the space. That's another thing I like to do too, is subdivide the space out. So, like, if I open up a, a bin, I have kind of sub-compartments to reorganize that, that space. So, not only am I organizing the space of with the big bin, but the bin, the internal bins, whatever word I'm going to use, is organized too. So, if that makes any sense. And then that's another thing I like to create is just the organization systems. And just get more organized as much as possible. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I was like, wow, I'm actually surprised I just kind of put it together. Some of it, some, I, none of, well, I shouldn't say none of it, but most of it is just stuff I got for free or already had on hand. I mean... I have this other compartment bin, those free compartment bins that you may see that pull out and stuff like that. Now this one doesn't have a wheels on it, but I remember finding something like that at a local free reusing area. I was just like, yeah, I'm taking this, I'm taking this, I'm taking this, I'm taking it. I had to use a bunch of cordage to bring it home, but I did it. Speak of cordage here, I'm gonna do something else here. Let me just move a few things out of the way here. Oh, and probably uh, make sure I put things away. <laughs> I gotta remember to put things away. I'm always really bad at times for doing these live streams and bringing out stuff and not putting that away. So I'm trying more to remember to put the stuff away, including this bank line. So that way it's. Ready to go on the next time I really need it? Right? How many times have people been... And I know sometimes I'm bad for, like, pulling stuff out and forgetting to put it back in. And stuff like that. I mean, it's one thing if you need it, but... If you... 
if you haven't used it all or it's still useful, you could still should put it back. Like in a bin, container, backpack, your pocket, stuff like that. It's just like um with your with like a knife for example, putting it back in its sheath or folding it back up after every use. Unless you don't immediately use it in within like a second or two. But you're not gonna be using it for a bit, you know, put it back away. So it's ready to go again. No danger of getting cut randomly or something like that, or it's slipping or something like that because it's in the sheath or it's closed back up like a folder. So you guys want to see another creation? I know you guys want to see another one. I'll, I'll show you guys something. You guys are going to get a sneak peek on this right now. Here's a creation right now that I did. And yeah, all the stuff. Yep, yeah, all the stuff in here. Pretty much. I This whole kit, every part of it, it's ever the duct tape because... No, actually the duct tape I got from... No, actually, yeah, I did buy that duct tape. Aside from the duct tape, every part of this kit, every part of this is either I've gotten at it for free at a free place that I can get free stuff or whatever, or it's stuff that I reused. Now this, oh shit! Now I'm not gonna show extreme close-ups, but there's a few things in. Well, you know what? I'll just show it right here. This is kind of a kit that I've been working on. I've actually revised this since so it didn't actually look this nice in the beginning. But pretty much this is kind of a kit that revolves around like uh, not sewing but fishing, eating, that kind of thing. So you see a knife right here. There's a, there's a spoon right here. There's some uh, kind of braided fishing line in here. And yes, there's a fishing kit. This is a fishing kit right here. That this that container that's a chapstick container that's reused. The straw is being reused. This knife, it's a flexible knife, so I can use it for filleting and stuff like that. That I got for free at a free place, and it is full tang. And there's a fork and some chopsticks on the back. The ranger bands that's just being reused. So. Here's an example of something right here. Didn't even cost much, but has useful stuff in it. Such as, uh, like a cutting tool. You know, chopsticks. Spoon. A little fishing kit. And stuff like that. I'm still working on this, by the way. I mean, you guys just got a sneak peek on this. I wasn't even going to plan to show this, but I was like, you know what? I'll show it because Gray's in the house. Grace in the house, so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna show this. I'm gonna show it. Why not? That's just an idea of something that you could possibly do. And like I said, a lot of that stuff I didn't even buy. Now I had to find it or whatever. But that's an example of something you could do too. You can make a kit similar to that. So when I hear people say, you know, Oh, I can't do this or that. Well, you just gotta f go out and find the resources then. Find places that offer free stuff. You know, find these free containers and stuff like that. Maybe go to church sales, yard sales and stuff like that. Fridge stores and stuff like that. Try to f find uh, secondhand stuff. I mean, you may come across some something that's full tank. And, my, and some of it, you may actually f be familiar with a brand in it. You know, maybe you, like, I thought I had it nearby. No, I don't. I thought I had it nearby. Oh, yeah, here it is. Here's a water bottle right here. And I seem to have a pop-up towel in it right now. My... It's an Algene bottle. I found this for f I got this for free. 
That's 32 ounces, one liter. Now, I haven't committed this to anywhere, and there's a pop-up towel in there for some reason, but... This is a resource right here. I got it for free. I had to find it, but... I didn't have to pay anything for it. So those those resources are out there. Or you're taking other stuff like that chapstick and reusing it as a container for something else and making a XYZ kit out of it or using it as an organizer or using it to store certain things into. You know, that's another reason why I started this channel. And that's why I create, and the redundancy part is actually the backup part. The survivalism preparedness part. So. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Gray. But yeah. You guys should thank Gray, because if Gray wasn't here, I don't know if I would show that. <laughs> just kidding. But yeah. That's just something really easy. I mean, like, I just put that together. And that's just one example right there. That's one example. I could show you guys a lot more. And maybe, maybe, depending, there may be another sneak peek here and there. I'm just kind of, uh, seeing, checking out some messages real quick here. So let's make some, I'm going to make something else live here. Something else live. Now this is going to be a little bit more crafty, I guess, but. Because I have it on the side, actually. I almost forgot. I got to put this away. <laughs> put your tools away, CR. Put your tools away. So, oh, and have some coffee. Like I said, creating and coffee go hand in hand for me, just like Maple Leaf. And this random beaver <laughs> that I have. Oh yeah, that's good coffee. So I'm gonna do something else here. Now, this is a little bit more crafty. I haven't actually used this, but here's a brush. So I'm just really don't brush by everything here. No, I'm just kidding. This brush, I actually found this. I'm pretty sure I, I either found this or I got it for free, one of the two, but I did not pay for it. Now, one thing I did do was add a hole, kind of like a lander hole. Now, so look at it. I'm not sure if this is real or whatever it is, right? Show it right here so you guys can see it. I'm going to do something with that right now. It's more going to be more crafting, like, this. Probably it doesn't really apply to survivalism or preparedness, but I'm gonna do something with it. I'm gonna do something with it. Kind of make it kind of more unique, maybe more, you know, CR like. Because everyone knows I like to create, right? Although I think that was just an understatement right there. I like to create a lot. <laughs> and I really, really do. I really do. I don't know, it's just, it's just something when I create, it's just like, it just makes me smile and just, just, I don't know why. I mean, maybe it's because I'm putting stuff together, scraps together and from that useless state to back into a useful state. Maybe it's because I'm reusing containers and stuff like that and making something like that kit that you just saw. Finding those resources and putting it together making stuff for other people just like that pouch that I just showed. I mean, I guess it's all of that that really makes me really super excited about creating! Sorry, I got a little enthusiastic about that, didn't I? Just checking up on something real hard. Just give me a sec. So let's see what I could do with this brush. And for some reason I still have the lighter on the table. Let's see what I can do with this. Now I'm not sure what I'm going to use the brush for this brush. I haven't used it yet. I mean, well I guess I can wipe the table. <laughs> I think I was using it for my keyboard. 
for a little bit. I'm using it for my keyboard. Get the dust off, you know, ink crumbs and stuff like that. Trying to keep keep it relatively clean on my key, key, uh, keyboard on my desktop. I think that's what I was using this for because it was long enough and the bristles can get in there. So I think I'm going to continue using it for that reason. So I'm not really going to be using... Well, I guess I'm not really going to be using it for crafting purposes. I mean, I guess I could, but... Let's see what I can do with this. What can I do with that? Hmm... First thing I know what I'm going to do, grab some sandpaper here. Uh, this is 150. I just have a portion of it scrapped and I have just going to sand this a little here. So you guys don't hear that so much of me sanding in the back. Oh, literally I'm sanding in the back. <laughs> just so you guys don't hear that so much move this out a little here I'm gonna go grab something real quick here to work with so this is gonna be more of the crafting side see the creative side is like the crafting side you know the redundancy side is more like the preparedness survivalism side so like kinda it looks nice and it's functional. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. I know when I was going through the chat, coming up with a name, I'm just like, there's a reason why I came up with this. And I'm like, yeah, as time went on, I'm like, yeah, it's starting to make more and more sense why I did this in the first place. I mean, I've answered VR, uh, VR side, so tanks about what, creating and stuff like that. Why you came up with your channel name and all that stuff. I have videos on that. Get that nice and smooth here. So I'm gonna personalize this brush a little bit more. Uh, let me just put this sandpaper away. Still good, so. Sandpaper's still good, so I'm not done wasting it. Just put it off to the side. And yes, I do have a container to organize the sandpaper. I, you have an organizer for the sandpaper too. Right? When things are organized, it's a little bit easier to create with. You don't have to fuss and muss trying to find stuff. It's in a designated location. Just like in preparedness, having like, you know, your bug out bag ready to go, your go bag, whatever, your emergency preparedness bag ready to go. Well, I got the stuff to create with ready to go. And when I'm creating, I'd be like, you know, Oh, I need this container. Well, I have a I have a bin of containers to use. Now I can easily just cycle through and be like, oh, hey, I want this or that. Easily pick and choose, depending what I need, depending the characteristics I need, the size and all that stuff. It's already ready to go, and I don't have to fuss and muss about it. And if I want to add to the collection or whatever, or restock on it, I can easily do that. That's a go by grade. I don't know. It just says 1351 on it. I don't know. It says a 1 and a little arrow and a 6. I mean, I'm not sure if my camera's going to pick it up. But. It's probably make that out. Like I said, it says, oh, it says, oh, sorry, it says 135J, so 135J. I have no idea what that means, by the way. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Like I said, I found this or I got it for free, one and two. I can't remember, it's been a while. Oh, the sandpaper? The sandpaper is uh, 150. I, I just had it nearby. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking this. What am I thinking? There's a grade on this. <laughs> So I'm gonna grab something here, and apparently I had a container roll off the table too. <laughs> Where 
remember what I said about containers and organizing? Well, here's an example right here. Oh, yeah, just like the coffee I like to always drink. Maybe not always specifically this brand, but yes, I like reusing these containers. I like this container too because it's easy to, there's a handle. Well, you know, or a grab handle anyways. You know, and these are easy to stack up too. I can easily stack these up and use this vertical space. Or use the sp I mean, like, I put these underneath a bed and stuff like that, or something like that. I could easily use that space. So I'm wa not wasting the space underneath a bed, underneath a desk, or something like that. Because I'm filling it up. And then sub-organizing the container. <clears throat> so, let's see what I'm going to use for this. If you're wondering what's inside, let's just say it's kind of a bunch of colorful stuff. It's more for crafting purposes. Or for, uh... Well, for crafting purposes. So, let me welcome into the room with a big T and an X. Oh, because... Boom! Texas Little Star's in the house. Hello! Hi! You're just in time for this one. <laughs> You're just in time for this way. I'm gonna be crafting here. I'm just kind of figuring out what I want to put into this one. I do have glitter. I I do have this stuff too. Let's see what else. What else? What else? What else is in here? Glitter glue. Oh, more stuff. <laughs> Random white out. <laughs> and remember what I said. There, I don't limit myself to any specific resource or or uh, item. I actually use well. There's virtually no item or resource I won't actually use for trading purposes. As long as it's kind of not currently used or something like that. Especially if it's in the useless, currently useless state. It's getting trash. No one wants it anymore. I'll be like, okay, let's see what I can do with this. Now, I try to reuse stuff as much as possible. I've said that time and time again. I've said that yesterday in a panel live stream and all that stuff a lot of you heard me say that but yes I do have this stuff too oh I know oh since I have a bunch of like people in there you know what this stuff is I know you guys know what this stuff is yeah that's why this is more for crafting purposes <laughs> So let me welcome into the room here with with uh with a big yippee and a big boom. Hello, Lisa from lovely Lisa Warrior Queen. Hello, and thank you for taking the time to drop in. I appreciate not only you dropping by, but everybody else dropping by for this live creation mode time with me, which. I've also shown some other creations that I've done. So if you haven't, you haven't seen that, you know, maybe you want to back up on the video, on the stream. I think I had the DVR portion on, so you could rewind back a little and see a couple of things. Or if you're checking this on the replay, right, right, right. All right, Tex. So yeah, I'm gonna create with this stuff right here. Oh, should make sure it's more in frame. I keep forgetting I'm not in frame for this. Oh, and you can't see the brush. That's what I'm actually working on. <laughs> so let's see what I can do with this kind of stuff. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna personalize this brush a little bit more. Now, unfortunately, it is kind of late in the day for me, so I cannot solar engrave this at the moment, but. I'm actually not going to do it for this. I'm actually going to 
Let's see. Like I said, I'm probably gonna use this brush for like just for my keyboard or whatever, just to wipe, you know, dust and stuff like that. Like I am right now. Try to get the crumbs out and all that stuff. Anywhere that I feel like, you know, dust might settle, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, still, I'd be doing like this. Because I can easily get in between cracks that I can't really get. And yeah, you probably could get away or use like something like compressed air or something like that. Well, compressed air is a finite type of resource that it's a consumable resource. So something like this is reusable kind of deal. And if it gets kind of dirty or gummed up or something like that, I could probably wash it. As long as there's no paint on it yet. So just because it's a, per se, paintbrush doesn't mean necessarily mean you need to use it for paint. You can use a brush for other things. Like I, I am right now. Actually, I'm doing that right now. <laughs> I seem to be like destiny right now. So, what I'm going to do with this here. Now, I'm going to see if I got some here. I think I still got some. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, I don't think this is clear nail polish, but I'm going to see. If I don't got clear nail polish, I got some uh, clear coat stuff that I can apply over top when I do this. So, let's do some here. And, CR's favorite color is red. And not just because of this. <laughs> so, I'm going to actually, yeah. Oh wait, this one's empty. <laughs> I forgot that one's empty. Yes. Oh, and if if you haven't if you haven't seen because he just came in, I just made something from one of these. So you can guys can go check it out or catch the replay on it afterwards after the stream's over. But I made something from one of these already, so I figured I'd bring it back in. And let's twist. Oh, wait. Wait. Twist. There we go. <laughs> so I'm. Yeah. Yeah, you see, you're seeing this. Don't. Uh, no, no, it's not coming over here. It's going down there. Like I said, I don't limit myself on when I'm creating stuff and the resources. Just because. I know this is lipstick. I know this is red lipstick. But. Doesn't necessarily mean you can. There's other ways of using this kind of stuff, if need be. You know, more secondary uses. Honestly, everyone knows what the primary use of this is. It's more common use. But there is kind of secondary uses, if need be, or if you want to. For both crafting purposes and for survival-related reasons. I remember when I was a little bit younger and I saw this one video of it, it was either with 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 lipstick or whatever. Like, um, let me just put this down for a sec here. Grab a piece of. I'm just gonna grab a piece of paper here. As an example here, let's pretend this is a door. During an during an earthquake type of scenario, all right. Everything's unstable. You know, things are crumbling and all this stuff. If you were checking a, a checking a place or a, a rumor example there's you would write you would put a zero or a circle oh actually I'll put it right here because it's easier so when you first enter the room and you're checking the room you know for you know your friend family member whatever you know making sure right Be, when you enter the room you would put a big circle all right, and then when you leave the room, if there's no one in there or whatever, you cross it out. That way, when people check that room or whatever, they know, hey, there's no one else in there. It's been checked already. And the reason is because the lipstick will actually can be written on multiple surfaces. To the point, I'll actually show, I'll actually show this right now. Real quick, um, let me grab somewhere here to actually show this. I wasn't actually planning to do it like this, but whatever. Oh, I guess I have a container right here to use. 
and then use the lid. This lid right here. And then flip this upside down. And then pour my coffee over this. Alright. You can see that I'm pouring the coffee over there. So let's pretend that's wet. For example, right? Situations like these. You can take something like lipstick and still write with it. Look, look. I'll put the that, that same thing in there. Look at that. You can see, uh, you see that? I just wrote on that even though it's wet. And that's just a normal piece of paper. That's because lipstick has more uh like a wax and including the pigments and the color in it but as you can see there you can write with lipstick even though the surface is wet so that's just some another tip that i uh keep in mind and that's another reason why i keep this around not just for crafting purposes but if need be i can write on surfaces such as that because I can take something like a sharpie. Everyone's familiar with a sharpie. I'm, I can't write on that surface really well. I mean, I could sort of do it, but it's not as as pronounced as as what the lipstick did. See, fades away, fades away, fades away. I mean, I'll even grab a nerve sharpie. Yeah, I'll even I'll grab one of these uh, dry erase markers, for example. Not really writing on it. Not really writing on it too well. Right? Kind of hard. This paper is still wet, as you can see here. I could probably still write on this. Such as I can write CR on it. Oh, it's upside down, but for example. Oops. Got to close the lipstick. Now I gotta wipe the table off. <laughs> But, yeah. I remember when I was first trying it out, I, I actually tried it underwater. That's why, that's why I know about this. So that's just something I keep in mind. And now I gotta, like, make sure I don't leak coffee over. <laughs> Putting this to the side real quick. So, something to keep in mind. Hey, no problem, no problem, Gray. I mean, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that until I tried. It's just something I keep in mind. It's just something I keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Tex. Right? Make markings on trees and stuff like that. That's why I keep this kind of stuff in mind. That's why, you know, if you had to write on a surface that may not accept like a Sharpie or something like that, well, you got lipstick ladies or whatever, right? You know, maybe you're with a friend that has the lipstick on them for some reason, you know? Most likely, you'd be able to write on the surface, and as you saw, even on a wet surface, it's possible. I wouldn't say guaranteed, but you know, obviously, depends on the surface. And now I gotta wipe, wipe, wipe that off. <laughs> I gotta wipe that off before I like continue here. So now I got the surface wet. And don't worry, I'm not, I'm not, not the use a paper towel. I'm just gonna reuse this brown paper bag, guys. I don't need to do paper towel for this, so I'm just going to use a brown paper bag. Just kind of wipe that off real quick. I'll let this, this, this will dry and I'll be able to use it again a little bit more. So. I guess that's why, probably why I use the lipstick. For those reasons, for those reasons, you know. It can be, it can be, it can be. If I remember right, because the, the wax in it. If I remember right. But obviously you probably still need some sort of. Something like fine tinder. Like a con ball con pad. Something like that. You probably write on. Uh, smear it on. Then light it up. So. That's what I keep in mind. Oh. I was, now where did I. <laughs> I guess I should have marked the lip. Oh here it's. <laughs> Maybe I should have marked the lipstick. Because I, like, I can't find it here. So let's see here. I'm gonna make sure I'm free here. I'm gonna see if I can put a scar in here somewhere, or see what I can do with this. Like, yeah, sorry, I have to come a little closer to this. So I'm at a frame on the top. 
but you can see me down here. So, let's see what I can do with this. Just kind of thinking about it right about now. What I'm, what I'm gonna do here is, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of it right here, just for fun. Now, you know what? Actually, I'm not done. Use the lipstick, because <laughs> I, the thing is, I have it now. I've used it. It's not pointy anymore. I'm gonna put that away for now. And this, no, this one's empty. See, this is why I, I have this kind of stuff. Just for this reason alone. For the crafting part of things. So, so I'm gonna take this green right here. I'm just gonna have some fun with this a little bit more. I'm just gonna, well, I'll do, well, I'll put like create something in there see already on this side on the other side right here since I seem to have a mark on this side I'm just gonna kind of have some fun with it make some color in there I'm just gonna use this green right here just because that's I have it right now and I want this to stand out a little bit more anyways so this is just uh, nail polish I know you guys are familiar with nail polish. Everyone knows what nail polish is. Nail polish has lots of uses too, right? And not just for your nails. There's other uses for it. I know some people are familiar with uh, putting it on matches and stuff like that. I've, I've tried that before too. You know, I'm sort of like using this right now like paint, <laughs> to a certain degree. It's almost like paint. It's almost like I'm painting with nail polish. This is not put on this side a little. Just gotta take a look every so often. But pretty much I'm like using it like paint right now. So I'm just gonna keep do doing this for a little bit here. Depending how it looks, I might add in there a layer of it, depending. Let me see here. As I drop something. Yeah, you could see that. You should be able to see that. Much different from the wooden color. So now that's that line green color. I'm just going to let that sit for a minute or two. Let that dry properly. So I was just using this. Oh, and I got this for free, so. Because <laughs> my friend's like, well, oh, you want that? I'm like, yeah. Why? I'm like, because I'm going to color with it. And they're like, your nails? No, 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 no. I'm going to craft with it. I'm going to craft with it. And they're like, oh. So I'll be pointing them to this video and be like, see, remember that nail polish you gave me? Yeah, I, cr I made something. Really? What you make? Well. Oh. Come and see this video of me live creation mode time, then you will see it in action. Let's see, what else now? Now, I don't want to flip it yet, because the side's still kind of... Yeah. I gotta let that dry. Oh, wait, I got an idea. I got an idea. I'm gonna spin it. <laughs> Take a little bit of cordage. This is the Arbor Canadian Jam Knot. Tied around right here. I'm gonna use it to kind of help me fry it a little. I'm like getting some air into it. Hopefully I don't whip it too far. I'm just gonna go like this for a little bit. It'll help dry it out. This air will get to it. I'm just making sure that it doesn't spin off my chin. And that should be good. I'm just gonna do this real quick here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've done something like that before, too. It's got, you know, I got this air stuff. I thought that he still had it over here, but it's like, uh, clear coat. 
that you would spray onto stuffing. You know, clear nail polish is not that much more different. Different. I'm just going to do this for a little bit. And if anyone's wondering why I'm doing this, it's because I'm trying to draw the nail polish that's on here right now before I continue. So it's not wet. So literally, I'm spin drying right now. I have no idea if it's dry, but let's see. It's starting to get drier. It's starting to get a little drier. It's not. It's not wet anymore. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool, Gray. To hear something like that, people kind of using what they got. To fix the problems, improvising, yeah. or in a nutshell, MacGyver something from the surrounding place that you're currently in and using what you got to actually make a solution. Maybe it's temporary and maybe it's not ideal, but maybe it'll work or work long enough until you actually get somewhere or to a place or back home where you actually have the real supplies to actually properly fix it all the way. So this is nice and fairly dry now. So what I'm going to do here. Actually, I know. You know what? Since I have a side chat right now. What color should I put in here? Oh, let me. Wait. Not in frame. A lot of these colors. Which color should I put in, guys? What colors? We got this kind of. I don't even know. Fabric. I don't know if this will work, but. This is like a neon, neon kind of color, and therefore our uh, uh, glittery, glittery gold, green, bluish purple, and uh, well, in a purple. I don't know if this still has any left. But what color should I choose? I know, but you guys help me choose the color for this creation. So while you guys are thinking about that, I'm gonna have a sip of coffee. What color should I choose, guys? And while you guys think about that, I am going to check on a message that I have on here real quick. Hmm. If there's been a delay or like lag or anything, sorry about that. Sometimes I can't tell. Because I'm waiting for OBS. Take care, goldfish. Oh, wait, wait. Did I say gold? <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? Take care, goldfish. I didn't mean to say gold. What was I thinking? <laughs> All right, you know what? Since gold, the gold, goldfish office said something in there, I'll put the gold in. I did, although I didn't really want the gold because it's not going to stand out. Yeah, maybe I'll use the gold. I'll use this gold and this. Actually, I'll put the gold on the other side. I'll put the gold on this other side. Now, it's probably going to be backwards or whatever. And I need to be able to see what I'm doing here. Oh, wait, I didn't draw this one out. I think I dried this one out, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have to get a tool here. To unplug this, it's kind of plugged in there, you know. <laughs> All right, there we go. 
I had to un I, f I hope it still flows. It's been a while since I used the blue. <laughs> well, never mind about the blue, because it's dried out. I'm hoping I haven't used this stuff for a while, and, you know, glues can dry out. Well, I guess I'm using the gold. Because I think it still foils. Yeah, the glitter glue still foils in this. I put the R too close to the C, but... Uh, I'm just gonna let that dry, because I don't want to touch it, you know? I'm not even gonna spin dry it, because, yeah, I'm gonna let that dry. Hopefully this will work, I have no idea. But I used the gold, <laughs> because clearly my... Blue right here is dried out. Yeah, it's dried out. Then put this to the side. I'll probably reuse the container. And yes, I have reused these containers before. These containers right here. After the kind of craft, the part is done. What you can do with containers like these, these kind of squeeze containers, you can actually do one of two things. You could put something else in there, like glue or something like that, and refill it and just kind of reseal it. Or you can make something really cool for fire starting purposes or for survival related reasons and make fire glitter paste. Because I've made fire glitter paste with these containers before. There's a video on it if you haven't checked that out. It's very sparkly and sparkly. And it will come back time and time again. Oh, just like fire go there, please. Yes. Take care, Gray. It was very nice to see you. Take care. And thanks for taking the time to drop in. I appreciate it. I'm going to have to let that dry for a little bit here. Now, I actually was going to do something else on this stream, but I don't think I'm going to have time at the moment, so. Kind of remove that. I, I'm just editing my tags in the description right now. I'm just making sure. That's why if you keep hearing me say certain words, it's because there's a reason. Because those are the tags that I'm using for this this video, so. There's a reason why I'm saying reusing resources a lot. Because I'm trying to reuse resources. And stuff like that. Like this brush that I have right here. But there is... Oh, just give me a sec here. I'm just letting this dry real quick here. Yeah, I guess it would be nice if I could spell properly. Alright, there we go. Bring my chat back up here. Alright, alright. So, I have no idea. I don't think this is dry yet. No. See, I'm going to have to wait on this a little bit more, and I cannot spin dry it. And yeah, I probably could try to use a hair a hair dryer or something or blow dryer, but I don't want to blow it because it's gonna smear it. I'm hoping to keep it like this right now. So I'll just bring it up closer to the camera so you guys can see. Now hopefully, hopefully, I'll be able to actually keep it like this. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. But this is more a crafty type of thing for me right now. If it doesn't turn out well, that's okay. That's okay. That's alright. It's 
just kind of put some of the stuff away here before I forget. Now, let's see here. Wow, I I can't believe I've been going for how long now? Three hours! Wow, I've gone for three hours already? Time passes by when you're creating. But, like I said, I'm, old, I'm in creation mode up to 98.6% of the time. And there's virtually no resource or item that I won't create with or attempt to create with. From lipstick, nail polish, nail polish remover, all that stuff. So, because clearly I made something from nail <laughs> lipstick, like a sewing kit, <laughs> like a sewing kit, like this pocket sewing kit. Uh, Oh yeah, that is, uh, that I seem to have misplaced for some reason, but it's around here somewhere. I think I'll have to, actually, you know what, before I even, there's probably, there's probably one thing I could do, as I just realized. Yeah, yep, yeah. there's definitely something I, I thought I just, oh, there it is. I can't see it because it's in the shadows. Alright, lipstick, no it's not lipstick, it's a sewing kit, <laughs> pocket sewing kit, something I made from scraps, we're using resources to make something like this, it's not ideal yet, but I'm making progress in this, and yes, you'll eventually see the bag that this will belong to, just gotta wait, just gotta wait. Maybe there, there might be a sneak peek, maybe, maybe in the future, future stream, future video or something like that, but you'll have to wait for that. Now, what I'll probably do since I'm actually here right now, what I'm going to do here is actually mark this, so it's different. So what I'm going to do here is actually take white out, and then take white out, do this with, so it stands out a little bit more, so it's a little bit different. So when I'm looking at it, it looks different. So I'm just going to put... Not really like artistically doing anything, but just adding it on. Now I'm going to do two sides, then once that dries, I'm just going to do there two sides. Oh crap. Wasn't supposed to do it. I'm not supposed to hit that golden part. So it looks a little bit different now. And once those two sides dry, then I'll do that other ones. So it looks different. That way, when you look at it, when I see it or someone else sees it, they know it's a little bit different. So they know, oh, I guess that's not really lipstick. CR must have made something out of it. Because I do like to create a lot. When I say a lot, I really do mean a lot. So let me see how this is going. Oh, let's see. It's still wet. I'm going to have to wet that dry too. I won't be able to continue that for now. Until it dries. I'll have to wet that dry. Now, I don't know if that will actually stay like that. I'm hoping to. But... Sometimes when I'm creating, you know, sometimes I just gotta experiment with stuff and just try stuff out. Because you never know. You never know. You might discover something. It might turn into a work of art. But until you try, you will never know. You will never know. So, I am gonna give the two minute warning for this live stream as I will be ending the stream in about two minutes here. But I do appreciate everyone that came by, which include Gray 1107, Go Fish, Office, Texas Little Star, 63, Iron Fire Horse, FDL Secret came in, Canoe, Avent Canoe Hound Avengers came in, Sandra, 
and I think I got it all for now. And Matthew came by too earlier in the stream and all that good stuff. I do appreciate everyone coming by to see me make feather sticks <laughs> that I attempted to do earlier in the stream. Made a sewing kit, a pocket sewing kit in front of you guys. A little bit of crafting with some lipstick and a brush and amongst other things. Reusing containers. A little couple extra tips that you may not have known of with lipstick. You know, I'm reusing these resources and stuff like that. And just knowing these little extra things. Not saying you would use them all the time or whatever, but as an option. You know, add to this knowledge bank. Because I always feel like that's important too. To try to increase the knowledge bank that you have. You know, that someone kid has thread and needle in it. You know, I tried to put that bank line cordage in there. Well, not yet. Until I get a bigger needle and stuff. A bigger eye needle and stuff like that. You know, and I tried to make something glittery. Oh, yeah. Just like the CR. <laughs> that. Hopefully it will turn out. Hopefully that will turn out. I have no idea if that's going to stick around for me. So, thank you for everyone for joining my, on my live creation mode time. Where I'm live creating in front of you. And remember everyone. You all can create a better future starting today. I'm just going to disable the second cam for a second here. So, where, what, how am I going to close this? How am I going to close this? I know how exactly I'm going to close this. Hopefully it's in the right direction. Oh, yeah, for once I put it right. You've been watching Creative Redundancy, also known as CR. Oh, and if you didn't see this, you can see the last previous live stream I did for Creation Mode, which I made this live in front of everyone. Because that's what I do. I create. I create. I create a lot. You know, in creation mode time, 98.6% of the time. Because like I said, I do believe that we all can create a better future starting today. And with that... Um, I was also going to say was... And let's see, uh, we all can uh, try to reuse some of these resources a little bit better, you know. There's some secondary uses. A few things I shared on the stream. So thank you everyone. And like always, it's outro time. So as the world changes so much oneself to reach a new level of skill and knowledge, one must practice. Now a single person can't help everyone in this world. But one person, regardless of your age to a certain degree, your nationality, your race, your gender, your sexual preference, your height, all that stuff can help someone in this world. And that help is creating a better future today for a lot more people. So with that, thank you everyone for taking the time to drop in on this. And it's peace out from the guy that's in creation mode, not up to 98.6% of the time. The guy that's on the screen five seconds ago, but has his logo up on the screen and is known as CR. Take care everyone, and I will catch you all next time. See you.